Welcome, 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 everybody. I am Vince Russo of Russo'sBrand.com, and I am here with some late-breaking news that, honestly, I think you are going to genuinely enjoy. Uh, Bro, this is great, great content that you are about to receive. Now, guys, I have to preface this by saying I've been writing for the last 40 years. 40 years. I have written two books. I have written screenplays. I wrote a a pilot for Fox. And obviously, I've written for three wrestling companies. I I currently am writing for uh, uh, Jericho. Web is Jericho. I'm currently writing for WrestleCrap. I'm currently writing for Rocky Mountain Pro. I don't stop writing. But as I sit here today live, I've got to tell you, I can't write this shit up. This is something, even, even from the genius of my brain, I could not make this shit up. I could not write this any better. And uh, I am so excited with what I have to share with you today because this is absolute proof of everything you hear me say on all my shows, on all my podcasts about the difference of being a professional and calling yourself a professional. You see, if you are a professional, you act like a professional. If you're not a professional and you're an amateur, sooner or later, that is going to come out. And you are going to see firsthand today exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to see something. You're going to see a conversation that Vince Russo, as a professional, would have never started. Never But you are going to see how unprofessionals in the wrestling business, those who call themselves journalists, you're going to see how they act. I am going to read you a conversation, a DM exchange between myself and Sean Sapp. Bro, last night I had a long day. I did five podcasts yesterday, man. I was really shot. I was really tired. I was just mentally fried. I'm sitting on my couch. I'm vegging out, bro. I'm watching Seinfeld. It it was the one where Jerry took over Newman's uh, mail route. And I I, I got my phone and at 10.03, 10.03 at night, bro. Think about this. 10 o'clock at night, I get a ding on my phone. Now, before we get into the conversation that I am going to read verbatim, bro, because you guys know if you follow me on Russo's brand, if you guys follow me on my Patreon page, bro, I am transparent. I have nothing to hide. I don't do stupid things. My brain is always working, bro. My brain is always one step ahead of everybody else. I don't do stupid things, bro. So I am going to share the entire conversation with you, and I am going to let you be the judge. But before I can do that, I've got to give you a little backstory 
of my history with Sean Sapp. And bro, it is Sean Sapp because he doesn't warrant a third name. You, you, you've got you've got to be somebody, bro, to have a three-name name. He don't warrant the, the middle name. It's Sean Sapp. So let me give you a little bit about my history with Sean Sapp so you guys understand where this all started from. Bro, it had to be about four years ago um, where I somehow, someway, I got in contact with Raj Geary of Wrestling Inc. Now, bro, I I love Raj Geary, man. Raj Geary lives by uh, here in Colorado. Uh, I had lunch with Rob uh, uh, Raj. Um, my wife and me went out with Raj and his wife. I think very highly of Raj Geary. I always have, bro. I've always put over his site. Um, we, we had a conversation that led to me doing a show on Wrestling Inc. And uh, part of that show was going to be a third party by the name of Sean Sapp. Bro, I, I didn't know Sean Sapp from a hole in the wall. But, you know, listen, man, this is Raj's show. This is Raj's website. I, th- I think Rod sold the website now. This is his show. This is his website. Bro, it's 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 Raj's rules. I have no idea doing this show with whoever Raj wants me to do with. So this is the first time, bro, that I met um, Sean Sapp. So, bro, we started doing this show on Wrestling Inc. And, um, you know, a lot of people were saying to me, You know, Vince, this Sean Sapp is really trying to get over on you. And, bro, I I could see that. You know, Sean Sapp, you know, he he was a no-name in the business. He hadn't really accomplished anything. And there would be these snide remarks of, you know, Sean Sapp trying to get over on me. And, bro, that's fine, man. If, If you want the Russo rub... If you want to make a name for yourself, bro, like who cares? I mean, knock yourself out. So we did this show together for a while on Wrestling Inc. It was the three of us. Now, bro, I don't know what it came down to. Maybe I felt I wasn't getting paid enough. Um, I don't know what the mitigating circumstances were. I don't remember. I'm, I'm sure Raj does. But I stopped doing the show on um, on Wrestling Inc. But I do want to add, I left on very good terms with Raj. There, there, there was no heat with me and Raj. Maybe perhaps I wanted more money and Raj couldn't pay more money. What, whatever the situation was, me and Raj left on very good terms. And I think... At around the same time or shortly thereafter, I believe Sean Sapp left as well. So from there, bro, I actually think I got a call from, I don't know if it was from, I I think it was from a guy by the name of Jimmy Van. Again, guys, if I don't remember the details exactly, I apologize. But I think I heard from Jimmy Van. This guy, Jimmy Van, was starting this uh, website called Fightful. And Jimmy Van wanted me to be a part of the site. And, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. Jimmy Van was, was paying really, really good money. Really good money. So... I, I make a deal with, with uh, Jimmy Van and, and, you know... I find out Sean Sapp is a part of this network as well. As a matter of fact, Sean Sapp was really going to be Jimmy Van's go-to guy, okay? So I start working on Fightful, and I'm working with, uh, you know, Sean Sapp. Bro, no problems, no uh, no issues. I, I, I do get a sense, though, bro, that... You know, Sean Sapp, bro, 
the guy's a little arrogant. The guy's a little full of himself. The guy's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. And I, 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 I've got to be honest. That is one of my pet peeves, man. I, I have issues with people that think they're all that. I, I really do, bro. I've got issues with conceited people. I've got issues with people that are full of themselves because I live by the law of, bro, one man is no better than any other man. I am no better than anybody else. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. And those individuals that believe they are better than others, I I just got a real problem with that, bro. I, I just do. It's a pet peeve of mine. And I was feeling some of this with uh, Sean Sapp. So we're doing our show. And what, what happens, bro, is my mother passes away. And uh, I was very, very close uh, with my mom, bro. And honestly, I I just, I, I wanted to get away from as much as wrestling as I could, bro. I just, I, I, I needed, I needed to get away. So I, I resigned from um, Fightful. I stopped doing Fightful. And again, bro, no heat with, with Jimmy Van. No heat with Sean Sapp. Um, I just basically said, man, my mother passed away. And I, I'm just not into this, man. I just don't want to do this anymore. No problem, bro. No heat. So, uh, yeah, yeah, bro, I've heard rumors about, oh, I was fired and this and that. Bro, I can give you the date my mother passed away. You can see when I left the show and the dates will match up. Exactly. So I I don't know if Jimmy Van and Sean Sapp have commented on this. I don't care. I know I left when my mother passed away. And again, those dates will back that up. So no heat, no nothing, bro. Sean Sapp goes on and does his stuff with Jimmy Van with Fightful. So, you know, bro, over the years, you know, Fightful is gaining a little traction. Fightful is is growing a little. And um, the more and more I'm seeing this Sean Sapp, God, bro, the more and more I can see, bro, this guy just thinks he is so over. Like this guy literally has convinced themselves, himself that he is, he is an important fixture in the wrestling business. Like he really thinks he's somebody. Now, bro, listen, man, I, I put in my 25, 30 years in the wrestling business. I never heard of Sean Sapp ever doing anything in the wrestling business. I know he didn't work for TNA, WCW, and WWE because I worked for them. And never at any time did I work with a Sean Sapp. But Sean had started convincing himself that he was this important person uh, in the wrestling industry. And the more and more that he convinced himself of this, the more and more he became full of himself. And bro, there was a red flag a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, I don't know exactly when, where he insulted, he publicly insulted a wrestler, a professional wrestler. He publicly insulted a wrestler And that wrestler was Disco Inferno. Now, bro, I'm going to tell you, this this now was kind of a line in the sand. Because I had a huge problem with this. You had a guy who achieved 
absolutely nothing in the wrestling business, in the wrestling business, not the outskirts of the wrestling business. This guy never achieved or worked in the wrestling business, and he's insulting a talent who was on television WCW during its biggest boom period, this guy that never did anything is insulting a talent? Bro, I had a real problem with that because it was personal. I, bro, never, never on a personal level ever will you see me insult a talent ever because I know bro those talents were the reason I had a job in the wrestling business and I will always respect their trade I can't do what they do it was these guys and it was these gals sacrificing their bodies that made it possible for me to earn a living. So never in a million years do I ever personally take shots at anybody in the business. I got a huge problem with that, bro. You know, I do I critique television shows? Do I critique characters? Do I critique storylines? Yes, that's what I do. Do I personally attack people in the same industry that I was in? Absolutely not. So I had a real, real problem with this. So, you know, SAP continues, man. I'm I'm seeing clips of SAP and I'm like, man, bro, this dude is just, so full of himself. So at this point, you know, Jeff and I, Jeff Lane and myself, were looking to add more content to the uh, Patreon, our Patreon program. And we have a very popular show, bro, that we've been doing for a very long time called Castrating the Marks. And what that show is, bro, is we take all these clips from all these dirt writer shows and we just kind of expose these people for the frauds and phonies that they are. It's a very popular show, bro. We've been doing this for years. You can get that show on russosbrand.com. So Jeff and I, we want to add a new show to Patreon. So I come up with the concept of a show entitled, Hey Ma, look at me. I'm doing a television show in the basement. And what we were going to do was actually do watch-alongs with some of these Mark Run, Dirt Sheet Run, Journalist Run podcasts. So we've been doing that now for a couple of weeks on uh, patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC. You could see it right down there. And the first two shows we did was Fightful, and it was Sean Ross Sapp, and it was Jimmy Van, who owns the, the station and who was the guy that hired me, Okay. So, bro, we're doing this show, and we're doing the show lightheartedly, okay? It is funny, bro. We are making fun of it. There are no hateful attacks. Uh, we, we are just kind of laughing at what they're saying, maybe laughing a little bit at their appearance, um, you know, that that type that type of thing. And we're just having fun with it. Well, bro, apparently our friend Sean Sapp does not like this. 
Because, bro, one thing I found out about these marks and these wrestling journalists is, bro, they just got tree trunks stuck up their ass. None of these guys have a sense of humor, bro. They take everything so freaking seriously. And Sean Sapp does not like that we are making fun of him on this show. So the show comes out. We do two episodes of it. And all of a sudden, bro, I am catching wind online again. Again, bro. Let me, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Jeff Jeff is pointing out that I got a super chat. I, w- I want to, you, you guys feel free to cheer. Uh, I- I'm sorry, you know, sub, follow, super chat, donate, feel free. Uh, Mike D with $1.99 said, Lanny Paffo just passed away. You know, I, I would want to confirm that. But uh, if that is true, man, that's uh, that's bad news, man. I, you know, obviously I worked with Lanny a little, and uh, he was a great guy, bro. Even got to spend some time uh, with the Pafos at their home. So um, if that is true, that is really sad news. So, bro, I I I catch wind that once again, Sean Sapp is referring to the Disco Inferno as irrelevant. Bro, I've got a huge problem. First of all, bro, Sean Sapp claims to be in the wrestling business, and he's he actually has the balls to call wrestlers in the business irrelevant. This is a business he works in, bro. Bro, I wouldn't call my worst enemy irrelevant i've clashed heads with a lot of people in wrestling my peers people that i worked with you will never see me refer to anybody as irrelevant never you know why bro because irrelevant means you don't matter irrelevant means if you died tomorrow nobody would care i got a problem with that bro I think we all matter. I think everybody's life has value. And if you're saying you're irrelevant, what you're really saying is, I am relevant. I am relevant. You don't mean shit. I am relevant. You don't mean anything. That's what you're saying. I got a problem with that, bro. I hate the word. So I put out a text, uh, I'm sorry, I put out a tweet yesterday addressing that. And I'm going to read you the exact tweet because, bro, I want you guys to understand, you know, what what I want to be transparent here. When I heard about the irrelevant comment, and yes, Glenn is my friend, the sweetest guy in the freaking world. I put out a tweet that said, Marks like Meltzer, Sapp, and the rest of them have no idea what it takes to be a pro wrestler. None. I do. I've seen it. I've lived it. Whether I agree with their choices or not, these are special people. A very rare breed. Every one of them to label even one irrelevant is a total, total disgrace. And I got to tell you something, bro. Everybody here in the chat room, all the people watching, bro, if any one of you were called irrelevant, I would have a problem with that. Take that irrelevant word and shove it straight up your ass. because. Everybody means something. Everybody, bro. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. You're here for a reason, bro. So now, bro, now we're going to get to this exchange. And guys, I am I am going to read you this verbatim. 
I've got nothing to hide. Now, bro, th- this is where, here's the problem. Here's the problem, bro. Now, this exchange that I'm going to share with you, I had a very, very similar exchange with Ryan Satin a couple of years ago. Now, bro, here's how stupid these people are. Here's why I will always be one step ahead of them. Because, bro, what they're trying to do when they DM me is they are trying to get a rise out of me. They are trying to upset me. They are trying to get me to say something that they can use. Oh, my God, bro. Last night on a DM, Vince Russo said this to me. Now, bro, what you got to understand is I know all of this going in. Do you not understand that? You idiot. I know what you're trying to do, man. Do you really think I am going to fall into your pathetic trap? No, bro. What I'm going to do is wind up making you look stupid. And I'm going to wind up exposing you. And I'm going to wind up making people understand why people like me in the business have an issue with these unprofessional hack marks. Before I go to the exact exchange, Tori used with a 1999 super sick. Tori, that is very nice of you, bro. Tori says, this generation has no sense of humor and are ultra sensitive, especially among the IWC. Disco's tweets are hilarious and entertaining. He doesn't come for anybody personally. Yeah, bro, that's the thing, Tori. We don't come for anybody personally. That is all they do, bro, because it think they think it makes them famous. By, by coming after somebody that's been there and done that, a Vince Russo, a Disco Inferno, Bro, to them, that makes them good. That makes them cool with the cool kids. That's what all this is about, bro. But what they don't understand is we will freaking expose you every single time. So, guys, I am sitting on my couch last night. Literally, bro, 10.03. Minding my own business. I ain't on my phone, bro. I'm watching Seinfeld. Jerry's taking over Newman's mail route. 1003, bro. This is the this is the DM I got that starts the conversation. Here we go. Guys, honestly, you be the judge. You be this is a professional journalist DMing me. At 10:03 at night. Hold on, we got another. Uh, we got another uh, donation. Thank you, Bid Moon 4.99. SRS blocked me, and I take so much pride in it. Vinny Rue is a legend. Thank you, Bid Moon. All right, guys, here we go. 10:03, bro. I- I'm minding my own business. This is a professional journalist representing Fightful, Vince. I just want to say this, uh, do you directly? Well, first of all, bro, you ain't saying it to me directly because you're DMing me. Directly would be man-to-man, face-to-face. So let, 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 let's get the definition of direct straight. You're DMing me, Sean. You're not saying this to my face. Vince, I just want to say this, do you, he meant to you, directly. Here we go, bro. Verbatim. Verbatim. You're a fucking coward and a joke. Bro, 1030 at night. I'm minding my own business. I'm watching Seinfeld, bro. 
I just want to say this directly. You are a fucking, fucking, bro. I guess that's cool. I, I guess you leave off the G. You leave off the G, bro, so you're cool. You're a fucking coward and a joke. Okay, bro, so that's how we start the conversation. That, that, that's how we're going to start this conversation, bro. So, bro, you know what my response to this is? Here's my response to this, bro. In all capital letters, huge pop. Like, bro, do you really think you're going to engage me in a heated conversation, bro? So, bro, my response is huge pop with three exclamation points. Now... Now, Sean gets into it a little bit more. I'm sure he didn't appreciate the huge pop uh, comment, which means, bro, I am laughing at you. I am laughing at you, Sean Sapp. So here we go, bro. Here's the follow-up comment. I take no great pleasure in your in you constantly reinforcing Every terrible thing that people have said about you. I gave you a chance because Raj asked me to. But all of them were right. You're just a bad, disingenuous person who cultivates an audience of even worse people. That's you, bro! That's you. You guys watching this show, he's talking about you, bro. You are just a bad, disingenuous person who cultivates an audience, an audience of even worse people. I regret ever having spoken to you, much less appearing on screen with you. Bro, this guy regrets ever having spoken to me. Meanwhile, bro, he's DMing me at 10 o'clock at night. At what 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 is it, bro? You either regret ever having talking to me or you're freaking DMing me at 10 o'clock at night. Do you see the ridiculousness of these imbeciles? So he, he, here, bro, he goes on. This is always my favorite part. You have people in your own videos. Your own fans calling you a, wait for it, bro, wait for it, bro, wait for it, bro, calling you a fake Christian, bro. Bro, there's, there's the Christian shot, bro. There, there, let, let, let's, let's shove down Vinny Rue's throat that he's really not a Christian and he's been acting as a Christian and he's been doing this show that's life for the last 10 years because he's trying to fool people that he's a Christian. Bro, here, here, here's the thing that cracks me up, man. These jackasses don't even know the definition of Christian. They, they have no idea what the definition of Christian is. When I tell you that I am a Christian man, they don't even know what that means. So, bro, keep in mind, bro, I'm sitting on my couch minding my own business. He says, your own fans calling you a fake Christian. If that isn't an example of your behavior, I don't know what is. You've shown to me that you'll mistreat anyone for a buck. Bro, this guy is saying to me, I will mistreat anybody for a buck. Bro, the guy just called me a fucking coward. He just called me a fucking coward, and he's talking about me mistreating people. All right, guys, we're going to play a guessing game here because I know you're a very smart, intelligent audience. What was my response to that? Does anybody want to take any guesses? What was my response to that last diatribe? Anybody? 
when 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 my Christianity was thrown at me, does anybody want to guess what my response to Sean Sapp was? Frank's pickle barrel said, "God bless." Great, great, uh, great, uh, great guess. Jeremy says, "Laughing." We're, we're getting close. What else, guys? What? Else? I'll give you a hint. It was two words. Huge pop. Thank you, Matt. Matt DeVinti. Matt, you're a winner. <laughs> okay, bro. So again, my response is huge pop. Bro, now he's really getting pissed off. Because now he's not sucking me in. Now he's not going to be able, bro, to go on his show to with all the little marks and say, oh, my God, Vince Russo said this and Vince Russo said that. So, bro, I give him another huge pop with three exclamation points. He says, that's about what I thought. My response to that was tremendous, okay? So, bro, how about this now? Why don't you, why don't ya, why a bro? Bro, again, th- this, is, this is a dude, bro, who's 40 years old, and he's using effing, and he's using, using why don't ya? Why don't ya, bro? It's, hey, Sean, is that what the kids say at, uh, in the schoolyard, bro? So, bro, he says, why don't you give me a call, Vince? Okay, bro, so let, let me get this straight. You just told me I'm a fucking coward and a joke, and now I'm going to give you a call. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, Sean. Yeah, let, 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 let me ring you up right now. So, bro, you know my answer to that is? Hysterical. I wrote hysterical. So then, bro, at this point, I go on Twitter live and I say, guys, Sean Ross Sapp is DMing me like a crazed lunatic. I am going to read this conversation verbatim when it's over. So he 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 writes back, oh, please read them. Well, Sean, I'm reading them, bro. Here it is, bro. I am reading them. How is this making you look so far, Sean? Are you getting over on me, kid? Oh, please read them. In fact... I'm happy to call you right now. Yeah, bro, like I'm going to give you my number. I'm happy to call you right now. I'll read them and you can play it on air. You know, Sean, with all due respect, I I don't need you reading them, bro. I think I'm doing a pretty good job of, of reading them myself. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So... He says, in fact, I'm happy to call you right now and I'll read them and you can play it on air. My response is, can't wait. Ratings. The ratings I'm getting right now, guys. You guys know I am all about ratings. So let's go on. On here is Fightful Wrestling with Sean Sapp. Hey, Vince, I'm still waiting for you to give me a call. Sean Sapp, I don't call people that tell me I'm a fucking coward, bro. No, we're not going to have a conversation. So listen, bro, the mark that you are, Sean Sapp, bro, enjoy the show like everybody else in here seems to enjoy the show. So, bro, listen to what this dude does. Cool. Give me a call. Bro, this guy actually gives me his phone number so now bro the 62 year old grandfather in me now the grandfather in me kicks in and i'm like i'm saying to myself bro you really shouldn't be giving me your phone number because if i was anybody else i would i would publicly put your phone number out there why are you giving me your phone number? I would never do that. But anybody else in this position would do that. 
So he says, call me. And I said, um, hold on, guys. I just lost my thing. Um, he, he, he gives me his number, which obviously, that, that's why I'm not showing you these tweets, bro. I said to him, bro, you only talk to top guys. That's what, that's what he said on his podcast, bro. He talks to all these top guys in the WWE. I said, bro, you only talk to top guys. I'm not a top guy. Bro, if you only knew how entertained I am right now. Bro, I, I, I can't believe this guy is giving me this content for free. How does he not think, bro? No, Sean, they are never going to hear me talk to you. You know why, Sean? Because if I call you, bro, I am bringing myself down to your level. This exchange, bro, is showing what a mark you are. I am a professional. I am an entertainer. And I sure as hell am not going to call any, anybody who refers to me as a fucking coward. So this... This is much more entertaining to me. So I said to Sean Sapp, you have no idea how entertained I am right now. So Sean continues. Come on, Vince. Give me a call. You want me to be a subject on your show? You want the clout? Bro, do you know what that means? I want the clout. What he's trying to say is, you want me to be a subject on your show? I want the Sean Sapp rub. That's what he's trying. Bro, Vince Russo, the highest ratings in the history of the WWE. I am looking for the Sean Sapp clout. Here's your chance. Sean, as you're watching this, are you literally looking at how stupid you look, bro? Are you literally feeling the credibility, bro? The credit. Oh, here we go. Vince Russo gets 10% of our live viewers. Laugh my ass off. Bro, are you not embarrassed now by this DM that you're sending me, bro? How this is making you look, how this is exposing you as a child, bro? Yeah, Sean, I'm really scared of a phone call. Sean. You're not getting the Vince Russo. What do you call it, bro? You're not getting the Vince Russo clout, bro. You're not getting the phone call from Vince Russo. This is much, much better. So, bro, let me continue. You want me to be the subject on your show? You want the clout? Here's your chance. Nobody else will ever have content like this. You are right, bro. This is phenomenal content. And I know all you care about is making a buck. Sean, what else should I care about, bro? We, we all care about making a buck, bro. We, we don't, bro, we don't go to our jobs and make no money because we're marks for our jobs, bro. Let, let me break the news to you, okay? We don't, we don't cover wrestling for fun because we're marks. I cover wrestling, bro, because it's a job. And yeah, bro, I care about making a buck. So I say, bro, it gets better, man. You, you guys ain't seen nothing yet because it, it, it gets to threatening me. Wait till you see when little Sean Sapp threatens me. Now, you guys, you're hearing every one of my responses. Am I argumentative? Did I say anything disparaging him? Did I cuss him out? Not at all, bro. So here's what I said. Trust me, you've already given me more than enough material to work with. Thanks, man. I, I'm I, Sean, I'm thanking you. I am thanking you for this material, this gold. I said, seriously, bro, tune in next week. Maybe I'll send you the script. 
Because according to Sean Sapp, people send him the WWE scripts, bro. Bro, can you imagine that? He's calling Disco Inferno irrelevant. Disco was one of the guys that wrote scripts that Sean Sapp is getting from a stooge inside the WWE, and he's all excited about it. He, he's calling the guy irrelevant who actually wrote the freaking scripts. Oh my God, Sean, I swear to God, I could not, I could not have done this any better, man. I, 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 I could not have written this script. I could never have asked for better material. So I said, um, hold on guys. Let me, let me just get back to it. Okay. Yeah. I said, maybe I'll send you the script. He says, I would really love for you to play what I have to say to you. I'm playing it right now, bro. This is what you had to say to me. I would really love for you to play what I have to say to you directly to your viewers. I'm doing that, bro. I'm, I don't need you to do that. I'm the freaking draw, bro, not you. They're not going to tune in to see a guy by the name of Sean Sapp. I would find that very entertaining. Bro. Please, if anything could ever be more entertaining than this, please let me know. Because now Sean Sapp is being exposed in front of the entire world. Wait till I get to the threats, bro. So here we go, bro. Here's what I love. Now now we start. I love the insults. Bro, have I insulted this guy once? Have I insulted this guy once, bro? Here, now, now, now Sean's backed up against the ropes because I ain't biting, bro. Oh, Vince, we have twice as many subscribers, 10 times as many viewers, 20 times. All right, here, Sean. Yeah, congratulations, Sean. Yes. Bro, you may have twice as many viewers, but my God, bro, is this making you look like a jackass, bro? All right, let me let, let me continue on. We, but Sean's going to talk about viewers now because that's all he has. Like, I give a shit, bro, about how many viewers are watching this on YouTube. So um, I said to him, now he's getting personal, guys. L li listen to what they do, bro, when, when you outsmart them. Here's where we go, bro. Vince, nobody tunes into your show. Bro, which is really interesting because I've been doing podcasts, bro, for nine years. Nine years, bro, we are celebrating Russo'sBrand.com. How in God's name would I be making a living for the last nine years if nobody was tuning in. Do you guys see how illogical that is? Do you guys see how ridiculous? For nine years, bro, I've been doing Russo's brand and nothing else, and nobody is listening. Okay, Sean, if that is the case, then how in God's name am I, am I paying my bills? How, how, how have my bills been paid for the past nine years? But Vince, nobody tunes into your show. That's why you have to resort to talking about dirt sheet writers, LOL. No, Sean, I talk about dirt sheet writers because you guys are hysterical, bro. Just like you are hysterical now telling these guys, hey, look, guys, look, I told him to call me and he's not calling. Bro, why would I freaking call you? I'm speaking for you right here. This is what you said, bro. You're starting to really look pathetic. Yeah, bro. Nasar Alexander. Nasar Alexander. 40-year-old bragging about followers. Ex exactly, bro. Exactly. I, I got no followers and nobody listening, but yet I've been doing this full-time for nine years. How are my bills getting paid, bro? All right, let me go on, guys. It gets better. Bro, you guys ain't heard nothing yet. Listen to this. Now, now Sean Sapp makes a funny. Now he makes a funny. Bro, listen to this joke. Now, guys, when you tune into Lions, Tigers, Bears, and Head, 
You hear Al Snow's jokes. Bro, listen to this Sean, Ra- uh, Sean Sapp's joke. You need to get hit by a unicycle or something so you have some interesting stuff to talk about, bro. Bro, did you hear what I just said? Do you want me to repeat what he just said? Here's what he just said, bro. Sean, here's what you said, bro. You need to get hit by a unicycle or something just so you have something interesting to talk about. Well, I can tell you this, Sean. I haven't been hit by one unicycle in the last nine years, bro. Not one. Not one. So what in God's name, bro, have I been talking about for the last nine years? So, bro, again, here's my response. Bro, this is gold. Don't stop. Please give me more. And what does he do, bro? He continues to give me more. He broke this. You you talk about burying yourself, bro. So he goes, uh, sure, give me a call. Uh, Again, bro, why in God's name would I call you? You start off a conversation by calling me a fucking coward. I literally am a professional. I literally was in the professional wrestling business for 32 years. You've never been, bro. You do a podcast. Why in God's name would I give you the Vince Russo cloud? Why would I? I'd be a moron. You never get my cloud, bro. Don't step on my cloud. So he says, sure, give me a call. I said, that unicycle one is really going to pop them. He says, I know I'm hilarious. You should give the being entertaining thing a try. It might help. Sean, with all due respect, I think this is very entertaining, bro. I think this is perhaps the most entertaining thing I've ever done for the last nine years, bro. And it's all because of you. Again, thank you. Thank you. So... (laughs) <laughs> yes, Ben Hameen. Let me. I'm, I'm pulling this, this one up. Ben Hameen, you can get the best cloud cover at horseshoegenetics.com. What a genius that Ben Hameen. Guys, Ben Hameen Media Group, uh, channelattitude.com, bro. Check out Ben Hameen, Stevie Richards, the whole crew, bro. These guys are. Brilliant. As a matter of fact, bro, I contemplated, I contemplated bringing Ben Hameen on this show, but I was like, bro, if, if Ben, if Ben is on here, th- this guy will get so torched that I, I I'm not even going to do that to him. I'm going to do it myself. And, and lo- lucky for you, bro. Lucky for you. I, I know, Matt. Right? Okay, bro. So. Again, bro, you should, you should, you should give the uh, being entertaining a try. It might help. Give me his phone number again, bro. Stop giving me your phone number. Stop giving. If I was anybody else, I would put your phone number right now in this chat. Stop giving your phone number out. I said you truly are. I couldn't have written any of this better myself. Thanks for all the material. Seriously, bro, I am thanking everybody. I am thanking the guy, bro. I am thanking the guy for this material. Here's what he comes back with. Bro, listen to this guy. You you guys are going to love. Sean, I would excuse myself out of the room for this one, bro. I'd excuse myself. Here's Sean's answer, guys. Vince. Everyone has seen your writing. We know you can't write anything better than me. (laughs) Bro, Sean, how many television shows have you written that have drawn 10 million people? 
How many, Sean, how many? Uh, we're, we're waiting, Sean. List them. Don't, don't list the number of followers you have on Instagram. List how many wrestling shows you've written that have drawn 10 million people. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Luke Balick. Luke Balick casually castrating marks on a Thursday. I, I, I'm just waiting for him, bro. I'm waiting for him to come back with the Vince McMahon filter. I'm waiting for him to come back with the Vince McMahon filter. Oh, my God. Look, look, here. Let, let me put Sean, bro, bro, Sean. I will put every one of your comments up because, bro, you're looking like a you're looking like like a freaking moron. I haven't written any that drew 200 viewers like this one either. LMAO. Bro, do all the you bro, do all the you cool kids use LMAO? Sean, you're 40, bro. You're 40 years old, Sean. Seriously, man. Oh my God, bro. He's gonna compare the numbers of people. Th think about this, guys. He's comparing the numbers of people that are watching a YouTube stream un un unpromoted in the middle of a day to 10 million people watching a primetime television show. Oh, Sean, lo I love you, bro. I love I thank you so much for this, man, because th th this helps me uh this helps me make my case um just 100%. So now, bro, seriously, I at this point I want to go to bed and and this guy is not stopping. And yes, Matt, as Matt, the great Matt Daventi music, check him out, pointed out. Uh, he knows he is one of the 200, right? Yeah, exactly, Sean. You're, you're, you're in the room. And Sean, by the way, it's over 300 now. I just I thought I'd throw that in. You, you probably get 3,000. You probably get 3,000. Okay, bro, now I'm getting totally bored with Sean Sapp. Totally bored. So now I'm, um, all right, Sean Sapp. You're starting to bore me a little bit. I'm going to bed now. Love you, brother. Don't forget to tune in. Sean answers. Make sure when you send me the link. You Oh, here's, here's another funny, bro, guys. Get ready. Here it comes. Are you guys ready? Here it comes, bro. Make sure you send me the link. You don't accidentally send it to Mike Johnson. I know that's been a problem of yours. Again, with the phone. Bro, I am so tempted to turn this phone around and show you the phone number. The guy gave me his phone number 10 times looking for the Vince Russo cloud. Okay? Bro, my response. Huge pop. DJ Man Dog. Yes. Huge pop. Bro, you need to be doing stand-up, really. This is gold. Love you, brother. Sweet dreams. Mark Wartburton, 1399. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. A max 80 job guy is more relevant than him, let alone guys who worked in the business in any aspect of national TV in the hospital in history. This guy is lost and sad beyond belief. Um Guys, I'm telling you, it gets better, man, because because he, he's going to start with the threats in a minute. He's going to start with the threats now, guys. Now, now I haven't given him what, what he's wanted, and I have pretty much laughed at him and told him that I'm done with him. And now, now we're going to get the, um, now, now we're going to start getting the threats. Wait till you guys hear the threats, bro. Sean, really, leave before the threats, bro, because I, I swear to God, bro, they are going to laugh at you so hard. I don't want you to be that embarrassed. So I'm giving you the opportunity to leave before I get into the threats, guys. He threatened me. Ray Mel Smith with $10. Thank you, Ray Mel. I figured out. The reason why all these mock journalists don't like Russo is he got to rub elbows with the guys in the back and Vince. Russo did what the mock journalist wanted to do and then some. I'm not going to disagree with that at all, uh, uh, Ray Mel. That, that, that definitely is a part of it. Dan P, bro, who is Sean Sapp? Never heard of her. 
Interesting. Interesting. I got everything. I love you guys for uh, 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 donating and cheering. All right, let me get back, guys, because uh, we, we're getting to the threats now. Um, we're getting to the threats. So let me let me just scroll up. All right, bro. I told him you're starting to bore me. He 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 had the Mike Johnson funny. I said you need to do stand up. He gave me his number again. Again, bro. And I said, here's mine, Sean. 8675309. Now, bro, I literally am trying to help the guy, bro. I said, bro. I just made a funny like you, bro. Three exclamation points. Seriously, man. If I were a top guy in the WWE, I'd consider. Now, really, leave me alone. I need my irrelevancy rest. Again, bro, he gives me his number. Now, bro, I am trying to educate this clown. I'm literally trying to educate him. I said, bro, seriously, why would you give me your number? If I was somebody else, I'd give it out to my thousands of subscribers. I would never do that to you. It's a Christian thing. But you have to be smarter than that. Lighten up, bro. It's only entertainment. Bro, bro, throughout this, this conversation has been going on now for 40 minutes. Have I said one derogatory, hateful, vengeful, threatening word, one to Sean Ross Sapp in 40 minutes, bro? Oh my God. AJ Rodriguez, 49.99. Wow. Wow. Now this is entertaining. Thank you. This is this is great, bro. This, this literally, man. This, this, this I, I I love this. This is great. So, bro, I I literally am. I, I'm literally now trying to smarten them up, and I'm saying, bro, if if I was anybody else, and you told me I was a fucking coward and a joke, I would be giving your 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 phone number out to everybody, bro. But I'm not gonna do that. So I'm really trying to smarten them up. Um, and I'm saying, bro, lighten up. It's only entertainment. All right, bro. He, he, now, he, he is a, he is a, he is a veiled threat. Are you guys ready for a, a veiled threat? He is a veiled threat, guys. You ready? When I tell him, bro, if I was anybody else, I would give this number out, but I'm not going to do it. He says, go ahead. See how that works out for you. Ooh. So, bro, now, now he's almost daring me to give out his number. Now he's almost daring me, bro, to give out his number. See how that works for you. But, hey. Give me a call. Might be a productive chat. Yeah, bro, it's going to be a productive chat after you called me a fucking coward. <laughs> really, bro. At worst, it's great content. Surely better than whatever stuff you're doing. Sean, nothing could be better than this, bro. There is absolutely nothing that can be better than this. Sean, by the way, I'm up to 330, bro. I'm up to 330. Sean's view and uh ten dollars, bro. Thank you. Sad day for us and Papo has passed away. What a sad day. A uh, huge fan of Vince Russo. Keep the show going. Did Sean Sapp ever raise Raw's ratings like Russo? Uh yeah, bro. I I obviously, man, I will address the uh Lanny Papo um passing on on our shows, bro. Because uh, you know, yeah, bro, I, I great guy. A absolutely great guy, bro. Um, let me, uh, I, I got another super sticker. You guys are being so awesome with this, man. Thank you. Let me just, um, let me, let me just clean this up a little guys. Bear with me. Cause now he starts threatening me, bro. He didn't, um, you know, he didn't suck me in. So now we're going to start with the threats and you're not going to believe this, bro. 
because this is what they do. This is what they all do. Luke Balick, I wonder if he got the Tommy Two-Tone reference. Probably not, bro. Probably not. But uh, I thought it was awesome. All right, bro. So now, now we're getting into the threats where he's almost he's almost begging me, bro, to put out his phone number. Go ahead. See how that works for you. Um, at worst, it's great content. Surely better than whatever stuff you're doing. Here's my, here's my response. Again, bro. I literally am trying to educate this guy. No, man, lucky for you, I really am a Christian. 99% of people in this business would do that. Not me. Cool off, take a chill pill. Again, it's only entertainment. Not one ounce of hatred for you in my body. bro. I already told you I loved you twice. Life is too short. You will understand that on my at at my age. Now bro, pay attention to this last line and then watch what this guy turns it into. So bro, I say you'll understand that at my age. Now please go back to your wife. Now bro, I said that because I know Sean Ross Sapp is married. Bro, why are you wasting time on this? Go spend some time with your wife. If I knew Sean Ross Sapp had kids, I don't think he has kids, I would have said, go spend time with your kids. Go spend time with your family. But I'm literally saying to the guy, Bro, instead of wasting time on all this, go spend some time with your wife. That's what I said, bro. Please go back to your wife. So now he says, I encourage you to. Please do it. He is begging me, bro, to put out his phone number. I would love to see how that works out for you. So there's the second threat, bro. There is the second threat, bro. Bro, now I'm just, all right, bro, we're done here. I say, good night, Sean. Okay? Now Sean comes back. Bro, you got, this is where they go, guys. This is where they go. And this is out of total desperation because, bro, you have not gotten me in your pathetic trap. You thought I was going to come on here and curse up and down and rant and rave. No, bro. That's not how a professional acts. How a professional acts is when somebody's coming at you like this, you're going to make them look like an absolute moron. So let me get back to um, where we were. Okay. Okay. I said, good night, Sean. I'm done with you. Good night, Sean. Here's what he says. My wife is in bed. She has a day job. I'm not going to tell you what it is. He told me what his wife uh, did for a living. Out of respect, I'm not going to tell you that. But he says, my wife is in bed. She has a day job. Here we go, bro. Now, keep in mind... Yes, yeah, yeah, Sean, you, you keep waiting for the call, Sean. Wait till they hear this line from you. So, guys, keep in mind, I said to him, bro, enough. Go be with your wife. That's what I said, bro. Like, go be with your kids. Go be with your family. Go be with your wife. Bro, here is his response to this, bro. This is what they do, guys. This is what they do. This is how they turn shit around. Because if I didn't read this to you, bro, if I didn't read this to you, his story would have been Vince talked about my wife. That would have been his story, bro. If 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 I'm not doing what I'm doing right now, that's exactly what Sean would have said. So I said, bro, the conversation's over. Go spend time with your wife. Sean says, don't ever speak about her again. 
And that's a one and only warning on that front. Now, guys, did I speak about his wife at all? At all. Did I speak about his wife at all? This is the guy. This is where he would have used Vince Russo brought up my wife. And, bro, this is a blatant threat. Don't ever speak about her again. And that's a one and only warning on that front. Do you Are you guys seeing how this stuff works, bro? Are you seeing this, bro? I do not know or care about your personal life. And if, it, bro, listen to this. Ben, Ben, are you in the room? Ben, if you're in the room, tell me you're in the room. Because, Ben, this, this includes you. If the great Ben Hameen is in this room, Ben, speak up. I want to see you. So, bro, here's what he says now. I do not know or care about your personal life. And if you, your co-host, or your viewers talk about mine, bro, why are we going to talk about Sean Ross's personal life? Can somebody in this room answer that question? Why would I talk about Sean Sapp's personal life when we have all this? I don't need to talk about I know the dude is married. That's all I know. Well, why would I care, bro? Why would I? Oh, so, so Sean says that I'm literally talking about it now. No, Sean, I told you, be a good little husband. Stop being a mark and go spend some time with your wife, bro. That's what I said. So if you, your co-host, or your viewers talk about mine, that's not going to bear any fruit for you. I guarantee it, bro. There is no entertainment in that with me. So then one guy, uh, uh, a good friend of the show, bro, Nick tweeted out, bro, why don't you try to make peace with this guy, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I already did, bro. I told the guy I loved him. I told him to take a chill pill. I told him it's entertainment. Relax, bro. And Sean says, so I said to the guy, I already did, bro. The dude's not listening. So now Sean says, don't lie, call me. Now, bro. Do I have to go back to the statement of you're a fucking coward? You're a joke. That's how the argument started. Okay. And not argument. That's how his diatribe started. Now he says, nobody is heated here. Bro, you called me a fucking coward. You insulted me 10 times during this conversation. 10 times. But. Nobody's heated here. If you are everything you've said you are, call me. Okay, bro. So if I'm a fucking coward and a joke, you want me to call you? And, and I've got to call you if I say I'm everything I am? What, what do I say I am, Sean? What do I say I am? I say I'm honest. I say I'm transparent. I say I'm an entertainer. And that's exactly what I'm being here. I'm being honest and transparent. If I would have said anything out of line, I would read it right here. So nobody is heated here. If you're everything you said you are, call me. I will not tolerate you lying about me, though. Well, Sean, you don't have to worry about that, bro, because I just read 334 people your exact comments to me. They're out there now. You know, bro, once word of this gets out, it's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of more viewers. Um, So there you go. I will not tolerate you lying about me. So you, you guys, if I ever lie about Sean Sapp. So I told him, bro, believe it or not, my wife for a living does exactly what his wife 
does for a living. So I say, bro, my wife does so-and-so as well. I always say it takes a real saint to do that. Kudos to her. So now, now wait a minute, Sean. Did, did I just cross the line because I complimented your wife in what she does for a living? Is is Are you now going to bestow the threats upon me because I literally just called your wife a saint? He says, great. Now stop lying and call me. Lying about what? I am reading the guy's exact words. These are his words, guys. Look, I can show you this much because his number ain't on here. These are his words. Sean Ross Sapp at the top, top of his page. I'm reading his words. Great. Now stop lying. I said your viewers called you a fake Christian. They did. They sent me a comment. Wait a minute, Sean, time out. Let me correct your grammar. If, if, if my viewers, plural, were calling me a fake Christian, you wouldn't have got a comment. You would have gotten several comments. You, you see the connection there, Mr. Journalist? Viewers would mean there's more than one. But you just said they sent me, me, a comment, one comment. So who's the liar now, bro? Who's the liar now? One guy sent you a comment about Vince Russo being a fake Christian. Bro, here's the best part, though. They did, they sent me a comment. Bro, look at, look at the line he says right there. Grow up. Grow up up bro bro this guy is dming me at 1003 at night i am being cool calm and collected and he is telling me grow up bro like guys if i did not have this on my phone you would absolutely 100% have to believe that I, 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 I was lying, that I, I, was, I was making this up, bro. The guy's bothering me at 10 o'clock at night, calling me a fucking coward, telling me I need to ride unicycles, and he's telling me to grow up. So here we go, bro. Why are you afraid to call me, Vince? Does a direct human adult conversation about the things you've said intimidate or scare you? Bro, what things have I said? You want to talk about having an adult conversation with me when you are a child and you open up this diatribe with Vince. You're a fucking coward and a joke. And now, and now we're going to have an adult conversation no, bro, you are a child. Everybody is seeing you are a child. The worst thing you could have ever done, bro, is pick up that phone last night and bother me. The absolute worst thing you can do. Uh, so what are you afraid to call me, Vince? Does a direct human adult conversation about the things you've said intimidated or scare you? What things have I said that are going to intimidate or scare me? What, bro? What, what, what have I said? Comedy gold? What have I said? Huge pop? What have I said? Your wife's a saint? What have I said in this conversation that I'm going to be intimidated or scared? Are you guys seeing this is how they work, bro? This is why these people were never in the wrestling business, bro. This is why Sean Sapp has to call Disco Inferno irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. You know why? Because he knows he's irrelevant, bro. He's the one. He should be calling himself irrelevant. And, bro, even throughout this ridiculous thing, I'm not even going to call him irrelevant, bro. 
even even for this ridiculous thing, I'm not even going to say Sean Sapp is irrelevant. But do you guys see how this stuff works? Look, bro, now 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 he's making fun of me butchering. Ar- Sean, is that really all you have left, bro? You're, you're going to make fun of I couldn't get irrelevant out of my mouth. Well, wait, guys, because it gets better. It gets better, bro. So he says, does a, does a direct human adult conversation about the things you've said, the things I've said, bro, intimidate or scale you? Uh, it, it's not that. It, it, it's not that, I assure you. So here's what I said, bro. This is my final response. And then I will tell you what I woke up to this morning. Okay, guys? Because after this response, I shut off the phone. I'll call you when and if I ever make top guy in WWE status. I'm turning off my phone now. You just don't know when to stop. All right, guys. So I am done with the entire conversation. Everything that I said, you all heard. There wasn't one insult. There wasn't one cuss word. There wasn't me losing my temper. Uh, There wasn't me calling him names. There were no threats. You heard everything that was that I had to say because I am home now. I'm done now. So, bro, this is what I wake up to. And seriously, Sean, I, I, I would I would leave the room for this one because this this really is sad, guys. This, this is really sad. This is what I woke up to this morning because I, I knew the guy wasn't going to stop. I knew there was going to be more. Vince, no, you're not. So he's basically saying, no, I'm not going to turn off the phone when I turned off the phone. So at this point, guys, the phone is turned out. Vince, no, you're not. You're going to milk this for every red cent you can because there's not a genuine bone in your body. Bro, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? If there is not a genuine bone in my body, then why am I reading this? If I am not genuine, if I'm not genuine, bro, that means I'm not real. So if I am not real, why would I be reading this exchange? I have absolutely nothing to hide. I read my entire part. So here we go. You're going to milk this for every red cent. You can because there's not a genuine bone in your body. You've posted a ton of tweets about it already. Guys, I posted twice. I posted two tweets. You guys can go look at my timeline. Bro, Sean, I hope this isn't an example of your reporting because you said I posted a ton of tweets. There are two tweets reported, bro. Yeah, now now Sean is saying you told me directly you wanted to fake arguments to fool you. Yeah, bro, bro, guys, I've never worked you in nine freaking years. I am not gonna look. Look at the out he's taking now, bro. I don't. I I told him directly I wanted to fake you. Yeah, bro. So this is all the work now, bro. That 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 Sean's that Sean's out. This is all the work. Let me show you. There are over 10 tweets about this from me, bro. There are two tweets, guys. Go look at my timeline. There are two tweets, and I answered back Nick. That was it, bro. So, and I'm talking last night, bro, not not when I was promoting the show this morning. I'm talking about when he wrote this. I've posted a ton, ton of tweets already about it. 1057, guys. Two tweets were posted. Go check my timeline. All right, here we go, bro. Here is the warning. Now, now you guys tell me, uh, 
we're working here, right, bro? Sean, this is a work, right, bro? We're all in on this, right, Sean? Bro, listen to this. And I'm going to warn you, full stop. That's a threat, bro. That is an out and out threat. I'm going to warn you, full stop. Remember, we're working here, bro. According to Sean, now we're working because I've made him look like an absolute jackass. So the only way he can get out of this is, oh, yeah, bro, Vince called me beforehand and we were working. Yeah, bro, I called you at 1057 at night. Let's do this work. Here's what he said, bro. Hold on. Let me, Luke, Luke with a uh, donation. It's criminal say Gilberti is irrelevant. He's the most over person at Sapphire's Gentleman Club. Sean Ross Sap, 100% peace sitting down. Thank you. Hey, listen. Disco will always be over with me. Okay, guys, here is the last exchange because I, I shut my phone off. So now, um, now Sean realizes he's talking to himself because I'm not answering. I'm going to warn you full stop. If my wife is mentioned, again, bro, the wife thing, I told this lunatic, bro, stop wasting time with this ridiculousness. Go spend some time with your wife. You guys heard the exact quote. If my wife is mentioned in any capacity, your little entertainment effort, things are going to change significantly. She ain't a character on your little show. <laughs> so there we have the warning, the final warning as Sean Stapp, uh, Sapp talks to himself because I am now asleep because I'm bored with him. I'm going to warn you, Vince, full stop. Full stop. If my wife is mentioned in any capacity in your little entertainment effort, things are going to change significantly. Okay, guys. I have been coming on here for years, bro. For years. Telling you about these glorified fans who have convinced themselves that they've ever done anything in this business when they've done zero. They are glorified fans and they are glorified fans with an opinion. They've never worked the business. They've never been a part of the business. They have no idea, but they've convinced themselves that they have such an importance that this dude can actually DM me at 10 o'clock at night, threatening me, cursing at me, insulting me, I have spoken about this for years. That is why, bro, you've got professionals who have actually been there and done that and lived the life. And then you got posers. You got your Sean Saps, bro. And your Sean Saps are wannabes because they never have, bro. They never have. They're glorified fans. And what is the proof? Bro, this conversation shows you exactly how they carry themselves. Professionals, bro, journalists, adults, grown-ups, mature people, do not conduct themselves in this manner. And that's why I tell you guys, guys, I am 100% transparent. 
I have nothing to hide. When I get something like this that proves my point, I am going to pass this along to you. So you guys have heard this. Sean, we're up to 377, man. You guys have heard this. You guys have heard this. You guys heard two ends of a conversation. You you heard an adult and you heard a child. So next time, bro, I do a castrating the marks. And next time I do on patreon.com forward slash Russo TWC. Hey, Ma, look. I'm doing a wrestling show in my basement. Next time I do that, now you guys know exactly why. Never, bro, in my wildest dreams would I DM somebody at 10 o'clock at night with a tirade, a immature tantrum like never 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 would i ever do anything like this that's it guys man again man that's why we do this show we do this show to expose and if you guys really want to know anything about the wrestling business you learn from those who participated in it bro There are so many podcasts out there with so many people that have done it from from Eric Bischoff to Bruce Pritchard to Jeff Jarrett, bro, to Lance Storm to Jim Cornette. There are a million podcasts out there with people that have done it. You want to know the truth. You want to know the skinny. You listen to those people. The Sean Saps of the world are glorified fans, bro. That's all they are. I I am starting a fantasy baseball podcast. I'm a fan, bro. I am doing it as a fan. I was never in a major league baseball locker room. I was never in a major league baseball dugout. I am a fan and I'm doing it as a fan and I'm not trying to come across as I'm a professional with inside scoops that knows top guys and they send me scripts. These guys, bro, they're ripping you off, man. They're getting information second, third, fourth, fifth hand. That's what you're paying for, bro. You're paying for rumors and hearsay with people that have agendas. That's what you're getting. Bro, when you listen to a a professional's podcast, I don't care who it is, bro. Pick one. The great Ben Hameen. Pick one. When we don't know something, we say we don't know. We say we don't know. We don't say, well, a top guy and -and so-and-so told so-and-so who told so-and-so. Guys, it's your freaking money. Seriously, all I know is, as a total baseball mark, I watch Major League Baseball Network. I listen to Harold Raines. I listen to John Smoltz, bro. I listen to the pros. When I want to learn about baseball, I listen to the pros. I'm not tuning in or paying for Guys that that are doing a baseball podcast in the basement? That's not what I'm... I want to know the real deal. How am I going to know the real deal, bro? I'm going to go to real athletes. I'm not going to go to glorified fans. And that's why I make it clear, even when I start my channel, I am a glorified, educated baseball fan. That's it. I do my homework. I watch all the shows. I have my opinions. I do not try to sell myself to you. I will not try to sell myself to you as a professional and a journalist of Major League Baseball. 
Man, guys, thank you for tuning in. I am so happy you got to be a part of this. If anyone, bro, is, is skeptical over anything like this, seriously, bro, tell them to watch this podcast. Um, tell them to watch this podcast when uh, w- w- one of these journalists basically exposes themselves. They can hear it for themselves. Guys, I'm looking for, I got one more. I don't want to miss it. Adam with a 999. Adam says, I thought about it for a minute, Vince, and I realized his wife can't teach him anything because you can't teach talent. Yeah, bro. I, I'm listen, I, I'm a Adam, I'm a firm believer of that I am a firm believer of the it factor. You either have it or you don't have it. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Pass this along, bro. If people are giving, you know, their hard-earned dollars to people like this, they need to see what people like this really, really look like. Guys, God bless you all. Man, please check out Russo'sBrand.com, Patreon.com forward slash RussoTWC, our brand new show. Hey, Ma, look, I'm doing a TV show in the basement. Check it out, guys. Also, guys, I want you to check out. I'm going to give a little a little plug to my friends at Rocky Mountain Pro, bro. Go to their YouTube channel, YouTube channel, bro. I'm working with them a little bit writing-wise. Check it out, Rocky Mountain Pro. Bro, check out Channel Attitude, the great Ben Hameen Media, bro. Bro, check out Stevie Richards Fitness. These are good people, bro. These are the good people. Support the good people, bro. God bless you all, man. Have a great day.